In this section, I want to take a look at the Mobius inversion formula. So we first are going to derive the Mobius inversion formula starting from the characteristic property of the Mobius function we saw last time. That's the uh, property where you sum over the divisors of n of the Mobius function. It always comes out to be 0 unless n equals 1. We'll observe in particular that a function capital F of this form, where you're summing over the divisors of n of a, a given function, little f, is multiplicative if and only if the little f function is multiplicative. We'll give a couple examples of applying the Mobius inversion formula. And then finally, I'm going to give a new derivation of the Euler phi function formula using Mobius inversion. So let's recall the characteristic sum property we saw last time. So we proved that if you take any natural number n and we sum over the divisors of n of the Mobius function evaluated at d, that this quantity is always equal to 0 unless n equals 1, where it's just equal to 1. So it's the characteristic property for the singleton points at 1. So I want to use this property to invert functions of this type. So let's start with a function capital F being defined to be sigma d divides n of little f, where little f is a given function. And then the question is to invert this means I want to solve for little f in terms of capital F. So how can you go about doing that? So let's give a name to this characteristic function that we have up here. We'll call this the chi function. So chi of n is going to denote a function that's equal to 1 when n equals 1. n is equal to 0 when n is bigger than 1. So chi of n is just a notation for this sum right here. All right, let's derive the Mobius inversion formula. So I'm going to start with a function little f defined on the natural numbers. And I'll define a new function capital F to be the sum over the divisors of n of little f. That should be d, evaluated at the divisor d. Okay, now I want to solve for f of n for any natural number n. So let's fix a natural number n and then observe the following. f of n is the sum over the divisors of n of f of d times the characteristic function evaluated at n over d. Now, why is that? So this function right here is always equal to 0. So it doesn't give us any contribution to this sum with the exception of one value, except when the argument n over d equals 1. In other words, when d equals n. So the only divisor that gives us any contribution to this sum is when d equals n, where this quantity is equal to 1, and so you're just left with f of n. So that's how we make use of a characteristic function. Now I'm going to use the formula for that characteristic function. So chi of n over d is the sum over the divisors of n over d of the Mobius function. So that's the characteristic function property. But we're summing over the divisors of the argument. This time it's n over d. So e is going to be a typical positive divisor of n over d. Now note that d is a divisor of n, so n over d is a whole number. e is a divisor of n over d. Well, what does that mean? If e is a divisor of n over d, 
That means E times K equals N over D, which means that E times D times K equals N. So E times D is a divisor of N, and then divide both sides of that equation. I was just mumbling by E, and we get that D is now a divisor of N over E. So E dividing N over D is equivalent to D dividing N over E. So now I'm going to change the order of summation. over the variables. E is ultimately going through what collection of numbers? It's a divisor of n over d, which is a divisor of n, so ultimately E must be a divisor of n. So, when you switch the order, E is going to be a divisor of n. The argument that depends on E is the Möbius function, mu of E, and then we'll have a sum over D, and now what's the constraint on D? It's a divisor of N, but more than that, it's a divisor of N over E. So D is a divisor of N over E, and then we'll have the F of D part right here. So what happens, what is this quantity in your inner sum? Now that we've switched the order of summation, this is precisely the definition of capital F, evaluated at n over e. And there we have it. So we start off with our little f function on the left, and it equals the sum over the divisors of n of the Möbius function evaluated at e times the capital F function evaluated at n over e. So think of these as being divisor pairs. Those are pairs of numbers whose product is n. And that is exactly the Mobius inversion formula. So here's a theorem. Theorem we just proved, the Mobius inversion formula. If f is any arithmetic function, and capital F is defined to be sigma d divides n of f of d, then for any natural number n, little f evaluated at n is the sum over the divisors of n of capital F of d times the Möbius function evaluated at n over d. Or you could write it the way we had on the previous slide, capital F of n over d times the Möbius function of d. So notice that, it, just think of these as divisor pairs, and it doesn't matter which order you do the divisor pairs in you're going to have exactly the same set of pairs, whether we write it like this or we write it like this on the right. Okay, a very interesting corollary we get out of this formula is the following. With capital F defined as in the preceding theorem, so F, capital F is sigma d divides n little f, capital F is multiplicative if and only if little f is multiplicative. Now I claim one of these directions we already did. So we saw if capital F is multiplicative, then so is little f. And we made use of that to prove the uh, tau function and sigma function were multiplicative functions. So we really want to look at the converse suppose that capital F is multiplicative. And we now have, well, little f is one of these convoluted sums. So little f of n, sigma t divides n of capital F, times mu of d. Well, capital F is multiplicative, and so is the Möbius function. So since capital F and mu are both multiplicative, so is little f. And this was a theorem that we also proved where you could put any two functions. It didn't have to be the Möbius function. 
by earlier theorem. It was a theorem where we, we defined a quantity like this. Sigma d divides n of f of d g of n over d, this theorem here. As long as these two functions, f and g, were both multiplicative, so was the capital F function. And that's exactly what we're dealing with here. Capital F is multiplicative, mu is multiplicative, so is little f. Proof of the Mobius inversion formula. Well, we already gave one. We derived the formula and that was a complete proof. Now, quite frequently what one sees in a textbook is here's the formula. Now let's prove that it's correct. And of course one can do that. You can give a very simple proof by just saying, ah, given this formula, let's just verify that it, it's valid. And if you want to do that, you just say, well, here's this expression. Let's just go ahead and calculate it. I'm not going to tell you where did this expression come from in the first place. Let's just go ahead and plug in the definition of capital F and see what this boils down to. So when you plug in what capital F is, there's capital F. Rearrange the order of summation and realize that this inner sum right here is the characteristic function out pops the little f. So it's really doing the derivation in, in reverse order. Okay, let's do a couple examples. So the tau function, the number of divisors, is just the sum over the positive divisors of n of 1. So in this example, we have a given function, little f to be 1, for all natural numbers. And if I imply the Mobius inversion, so this is sigma d divides n of f of d. That's what we're looking at. So the Mobius inversion says that the inner function here evaluated at n should equal the sum over the divisors of n of the Mobius function evaluated at d times the capital F function, which in this case is tau, evaluated at the complementary divisor, n over d. And this is valid for any natural number n. Now little f is the function 1. So what we're saying is that 1 equals this sum. And we've got a new identity. So this is for all natural numbers n. Okay, second example. Take the sigma function. That's the sum over the divisors of n of d. So this time, what's playing the role of the little f function? So we have a function of this type, the identity function. And so this is sigma d divides n of f of d. Invert it. Use Mobius inversion. We solve for little f in terms of sigma. So little f of n, sigma d divides n mu of d times capital F, which is the sigma function, at the complementary divisor. And so the formula we get this time is that n on the left side is the sum over the divisors of n of the Mobius function evaluated at d times the divisor function I mean, the, the sigma function evaluated at n over d, another new identity. And then finally, I want to give another derivation of the Euler phi function formula. So we're not even going to assume that phi is multiplicative in the first place. We're just going to say, okay, phi is this function that counts the number of things relatively prime to n. 
And I'm going to start from a property we saw of partitioning a cyclic group. So if you're in a cyclic group with n elements, you can partition these elements into the different subsets having a given order. So different order D, where D runs through the divisors of n. How many elements are of order D? There are phi of D elements of order D. And so we have this identity that the total number of elements, n, is the sum over the divisors of n of the Euler phi function. So I want to take that function, that formula, and invert it to solve for phi in terms of this capital F function. So this time, capital F is the function that's identically n. And so we use a Mobius inversion. And that tells me that phi of n is the sum over the divisors of n of the Mobius function times your capital F function evaluated at n over d. So in inverting it. Think of this as being your capital F of n over here. Okay, but what is the capital F function? It's the function that's identically equal to n, so it's the identity function, and we just get n over d. So phi of n is the sum over the divisors of n of mu of d times n over d n is a constant, I can pull it out of the sum, and so we get the formula that we had seen before. Sigma d divides n of mu of d over d. Now why do I know phi is multiplicative? So I claim that as a consequence of this, we know phi is multiplicative. Well that's the corollary we, we proved a couple slides earlier. Capital F is clearly a multiplicative function, the identity function. Therefore, phi is a multiplicative function. And if you want to go one step further and get the um, that type of product formula we had before, you just observe that this quantity here is multiplicative, and so you evaluate this at prime powers. So think of this as being some function g of n and g of p to the e. So this is n times g of n right here is just sigma d divides p to the e mu of d over d. And the only contribution was is d equals 1 and d equals p. So you just get 1 minus 1 over p and then use the fact that it's multiplicative and that brings you back to this formula.